got me all right. So we're back. Phone overheated. Howdy there, folks. This is Lapidary Dave. We are at the Corners Gem and Mineral Show in Durango, Colorado. Already met some familiar faces over there. We got Armando and Sons. We're going to make our way over there right now. Oh, make sure to like the video, subscribe if you haven't done so, and all that stuff. I'm a little shaky, I'm not used to the elevation, but it is good to be back in the Rocky Mountains. Uh, I do kind of miss California, though. Yeah, How you doing, man? Yeah. How you doing, brother? Haven't seen you in a long time. Yeah. Doing good. Are you, uh, were you at the gem mall this year? No. Oh man, I always remember this. When I think of you, I think of this material here. And it's a calc calcified, it's agatized, pyritized? Agatized, basically pyritized ammonites and agatized calcite. Oh, it's fantastic. Have you been making anything new lately? Um, oh, wow. From Brazil. I've never even heard of it. Trollite. Oh. Are you gonna? Do you plan on going to Tucson this year? I'm gonna be over at uh, yeah for next year. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm gonna be at uh, 1920. Oh, nice. Like that's near, um, what's the Oracle show? And that's Mineral City, I hear, is doing really great for how new the venue is. Some really nice, affordable cabs and facets. There's a little emerald there. But this is what I wanted to take a look at. These are fantastic. Is this material from Canada? Russia, really? How you doing, everybody? Rocks. Um, do you have a card, my friend? So this gentleman's really cool. He's one of my first gemstone friends from years ago. My good friend Anthony introduced me to him at the gem mall. If anyone's interested in any of this awesome Russian material, feel free to message the gentleman, perhaps on email. Do you ship international? Oh, awesome. Here you go, my friend. These are fantastic. Look at this. Definitely cored out using a core bit and then perhaps a, a larger core bit. I wonder what they're using to polish this because metal is not particularly easy to polish, like pyrite. I use um, chrome oxide for my metals, but uh, really. So if you folks are just now tuning back in, the phone overheated outside. Very super nice material. And really unique. I haven't seen anybody who has this type of material as much of it as this gentleman. Some big horn there. When I think of gem silica crystal cola, this is what I think of. Let's go see Armando. Take a look at this, some halite crystal. Is that from California? No, from Medi County, New Mexico. Tourmaline from Gem Hill, San Diego, California. I wonder how close is that to the Pala Chief Mine?
as you write. First time at this gem show and I already love it because there's no music blasting over the thing and I can actually get some footage here. Just doing a run through right now. I am not feeling good. I'm very shaky. I need water. Uh, I just wanted to give you guys something. I'm gonna come back and do a proper video tomorrow. That wolf night from Durango, Mexico is really nice. Vanna tonight from Arizona. I'm mostly used to seeing it from Morocco. I am feeling terrible. I'm not trying to complain. Mr. Armando. How you doing, beautiful? Senor, I'm doing good. Actually, I'm shaking. I need some water. <laughs> good. How's good to going? see you. How you doing, movie star? Good. Nice to see you, my friend. Good to see you. Doing good. Doing Just good. taking care of grandma. That's good. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I got sponsored by Diamond Pacific. They, uh, I'm not going to talk too much about it because the camera's live, but they've taken care of me really good. But... I have to go back and forth a lot, which is too much for me, like, <laughs> but it's nice. They, um, they're always talking about you at Diamond Pacific. And uh, I've been doing a lot of videos and I can tell your cabochons and your buffaloes from anywhere. I was in uh, Deming, New Mexico. I was in Deming, New Mexico. Somebody had some um, yttrium buffaloes. I knew right away those were yours because the quality. Flip it upside down, Ancho Mexico. Yeah, for real, man. Yeah. I still need to get to Chihuahua so we can do the documentary. Yeah, here's But uh, yeah, maybe in the wintertime when I'm not going to melt. <clears throat> um, Senor, have you made anything new since uh, Tucson? Oh, those are new. The Coyotes. It's a uh, Rhyolite? I have it over there, but I don't put it up. Mm -hmm. I have it up. It's fantastic. And your brother's actually making these, right? Mm -hmm. Your brother? Yeah. All in the family. Yeah. Very, very affordable. I like it. It's almost like pre-Columbian style. Yeah. Little mix of Maya, little mix of Aztec. And this tray is new. This gray is new. These are new too. Your polish is spectacular. All oh, the beautiful aguas calientes. Mm -hmm. Aguas calientes. Oh, wow. We chatted a little bit about your work in um, Tucson. Now this is your passion, is yeah. contour carving. Oh yeah. I started a little tiny bit. It's very, very difficult. Yeah, and uh, it's fun. If you love it, you know. And then it's its own set of tools to invest in and whoa. It doesn't come better than that. Oh wow. That's world class. Very, very nice fire again. Another piece. Beautiful. Oh, that one's great. Someone's gonna love that. Yeah. That one's ready to be set in gold. Yep. Very, very. Look at this, with, with grains and pulpos. Is this one uh, contour carved or is that one on the wheel? No, they're all in, in uh, like a dream book. Mm -hmm. When I come to Chihuahua, I need to take maybe a little bit of a lesson. I'm having a... I can, I can teach you. <laughs> 
I'm using a brand called AZ Dent okay. out of Mexico. It's it's a little bit cheaper than Diashine. Okay. You know Diashine? Mm -hmm. um, and I'm just having a hard time. I can polish it, but I'm having a hard time removing facets yeah. from the thing. <laughs> yeah. Sorry for bugging you so late in the day. I just got here. <laughs> and I'm <laughs> I'm tired. So you're driving from over there? Yeah, Taos, New Mexico. Yeah. And then I just flew in uh, like last week. That was good. Some of the bear inside. Oh, that's great. This is new too. Oh, yeah, the white buffalo. Yeah, white buffalo. <clears throat> so, the white buffalo, sometimes like Danny Otteson, you know Danny? Mm -hmm. He sometimes stabilizes it. Okay. Some people don't, but you lose a lot of material. Mm -hmm. Do you stabilize it? This one has been stabilized. Oh, do you, does it get stabilized in Mexico? Yeah, it gets stabilized in Arizona and New Mexico. Oh, it must be really expensive to get yeah. a, the whole batch done. Yes, yes. Because um, I try to cut it too many pits and it just crumbles yeah. on me. And I figured if Danny Otteson, the family that's getting it out, stabilizes it, that must be the premium way to do it. Yeah, that's the, that the best way to do it. So folks, um, it. yeah, like white buffalo turquoise, a lot of the time it needs to be stabilized. Uh, Sunny Gem doesn't stabilize his, but he does lose a lot of material. Whoa, is Marenzi? Yeah. Marenzi? Mm-hmm, Marenzi. That is fantastic. No, I'm sorry. Look at that. It's beautiful, isn't it? It's stunning. Um, you always have perfect girdles. Yeah, we're very perfectionists. We have to. And, I, um, I, per I, I personally, you know, look every piece before I bring it to here. Let me find a loose one to show you folks what I mean at home. So these girdles right here, about 11 degrees is what people want to set in silver. Some silversmiths won't buy stuff that don't have girls. I'm gonna tell you the truth, I've been cutting for a long time. I'm just now starting to pay attention to the girdles. Um, did you always focus on girdles when you started or did someone have to tell you? No, I always, since I started, you know, because I'm a, I'm a silversmith, so I, mm -hmm. I do a lot of... So you lot. knew what you needed to so make I need what I needed. So that's why my, my qualities always try to be the best that I can make, do it, you know. It's spectacular. How you doing, fool? We're here at the Four Corners Jib and Mineral Show talking to the legendary Armando and Sons. But I'm sure a lot of you folks already knew that. Just admiring his girdles. I really didn't start getting into girdles until I went to Don from Diamond Pacific's house, and he always makes girdles. And it's essential for silversmithing, really. Um, wire wrappers don't really need a girdle, but silversmiths, silversmiths kind of demand it. Especially if you cut in, you know, a high-end material like this one. Mm -hmm. You don't want to make a mistake in that, you know. Oh, you're the best, man. And an iron, an iron stone that is very, very tricky. And, and I, I, they always come to me and they tell me how to cut it because Latimar, Latimar is like a, a lot of little needles like this. Mm -hmm. So I mean, if, tons of needles. If, if you if you cut it, it start with an 80 grade or 120 grade. It'll it'll crumble on you. It'll crumble. You have to start with 220. It weigh you way down. You know, that's the way to do it. For me, I can't even trim the material. I end up just making a cab whatever shape you I already have, have small. You have to use like a blade, like a very, very not so aggressive. Mm -hmm. Like a continuous, not a... Not continuous. Yeah. Not continuous. Well, you're doing a great job. And uh, cerium oxide or sapphire? We use 50,000 sapphire powder. Oh, dang. Yeah. Is this your stuff? Yes, my friend. Oh, you yeah. charge for the $35, sir. I'll give you some really good prices on that. Yeah, Armando, he's, um, man, I, I, we just got to sit down and talk to him about his history and how he got started. I tell people a little bit on how uh, you started vending outside of a gas station. Oh, yes. <laughs> and you sold out. You just kept selling out. That's fantastic. And uh, Armando tends to use a lot of sapphire which, um, you know, every material reacts differently to stuff, but I think you can use sapphire on a lot of things that people use cerium with, though. Mm -hmm. 
like yeah. you can kind of change it up and yeah well there's a lot of different things you know a lot of different techniques for example some stones you know they're they're soft they they don't require like fifty thousand you can do like three thousand and then buff it up in like a serum oxide and you'll be okay like for example like uh, like the indian paint like this one over here this one is is quite soft it undercuts you know because all these lines and you have a little bit of metals you know this one you don't need like like fifty thousand. you only go like three thousand mm -hmm. and then after that you can use some but you have to use leather leather mm -hmm. if you use uh like a canvas, canvas or it'll undercuts mm -hmm. so those little tricks you know they're I always try to tell the people you know and the griddles you always have to be nice and even you know yeah so for those of you at home that aren't cutters the hematite and other metals in here will sometimes like pit down when you cut it or sometimes raise up um some people don't mind but armando is uh he cuts for for high quality um cuts you know the gentleman's not just shaping it and throwing it in a tumbler so uh he has taken the long road to get out all the undercutting Fantastic. Um, can I get a card? Yes. Here you are, my friend. Oh, thank you. I usually carry one of these in my wallet, but not today. Take it. Take it. If anyone is interested, um, Armando will ship. It has some of the best prices in the industry, and they also offer a custom cutting service. How you doing? Good to see you. I live uh, not too far away. Really? Mm -hmm. Not too far. Uh, in Taos, little town near Santa Fe. Okay, that's good. Um, can I, I'm sorry to ask you, do you have any water? I'm so sorry to bother you, Mr. Armando. Let me get water from my motorhome. Be back. Here's some charite, high quality charite. Um, I think I've been seeing a, remember in uh, Tus Kino? When you walk in, MP on the left, the bricks of charite, have you seen them? There were like stacks of bricks of charite. And they're really low quality. Yeah, well, it kind of makes sense because the location and the current events and stuff, you know. But your dad has some really good stuff. Can I trouble you to help me get this? I'm yeah, one-handed sure. here and I'm shaky. <laughs> Uh, you know, I uh, played a gig last night, probably stayed up too late afterwards, you know, and then slept in the car here and didn't drink any water. <laughs> no problem, brother. Very nice charite. This material can actually be a little difficult to cut as well. Fun fact. Oh, yeah, World of Rock Hounds. How you doing, brother? Yeah, those stacks of charite, they're really cool, but they're low quality. Um, a whole lot of what I suspect is quartz in it. I totally forgot what this stone is. Is it, is it agate? I'm not sure, man. It kind of looks like that blue opal from the Midwest. That's what I was thinking. Yeah, I mean, because if you look in the back, it yeah, has a little kind of cleave right there, and it doesn't, and yeah, I mean... It's maybe someone in the chat. What is that min the Midwestern o blue opal? Like Haley Blue or something like that? Uh, something like that. I don't really know, but it's like... If they tell you, let me know. For sure. And it fades, so you got to keep it out of the light. <laughs> <clears throat> Third time I've heard you put your health in danger. Oh, I'm a professional. It's the industry. But you know what, more than anything, I gained a lot of weight, and that's the most dangerous part. How you guys doing? Very cool, but we can look at Charite all day. I want to take a look at some of Armando's other stuff before we go bug some other people. Oh, Picasso, Jasper. Um... 
at the Diamond Pacific Rock Yard, uh, we've been finding huge pieces of Picasso Jasper, which is actually a marble. And it's um, $3 a pound. And I guess the material is from Southern California. No, Utah? Anyway, the mine has been covered up and they buried it. So even if you'd sneak in, you're not going to find any. He does perfect pairs. And I don't believe he's using like any kind of templating, like gluing them together or any kind of um, duplicator. He does the pairs by hand. I actually will um, take the slabs, glue them together to make a pair, but it's not as good as like, uh, as he does it. Thank you, senor, you're the best. Thank you, senor. Is, um, do you ever find bumblebee hard to cut too? Yeah. He's, he's got a lot of little pits. Your pairs are all freehand, right? Yeah, all freehand. I was telling people I glue them together and then do the side and then cab, but it's never perfect like yours. Yeah, it takes a lot of practice. These are 100% perfect. When you cut, you don't use templates, right? No. Like the stencils? No. no. Nice book match pair there. Yeah, that's incredible. Definitely another material that's kind of hard to cut. Uh, very cool. I hear that it comes from lava flow, but there's a lot of rumors about where exactly it's coming from. Um, yeah. What is that? Amazonite? Oh, very nice. Check these out. That high quality ultramarine lapis. I guess this is, um, this is Kingman? This is Kingman no. Tupac. Yeah. yeah, that's what I thought. I like that the book match has the green on the outside. You can tell that all of these pairs are coming from one piece of stone because of the book matching. Same thing with these. You can see the line uh, near the middle. That's a really good sign that it's they're coming from the same piece of stone. Oh, is that Vesuvianite? <laughs> I did not mean to come over here and make you work, Mr. Armando. <laughs> Fantastic. Is this, is it related to a nephrite jade or? Mm -hmm. this? You, can, you can tell that it, that it's jade, but it's not, you know. Mm -hmm. The same color, it's got the same. Patterns and stuff, yeah. And patterns start to tell them apart about it. This is Vesuvianite. Let's look at this in the light. Look at the translucence there. Found four Clovis points once, two chips. That is amazing. Uh, most people never find one. Oh, you've heard of Vesuvianite before, everybody rocks. That's fantastic. Would you like some lemonade or water? Yes. Would you like lemonade or water? Yeah, lemonade, please. Lemonade and water. water. Do you have bigger cups? We just have yes. small ones. Um, so everybody rocks asks, does Armando and Sons have rhodochrosite? Do you have any more of the really nice Ortiz? Somebody wants to see your Ortiz, your uh, rhodochrosite, if you have any more. So I, I'm sure if you folks probably remember the video from Tucson of the rhodochrosite. They have some of the best quality. I beg your pardon? Just tell them they can follow, follow us and they'll see all our stuff. Definitely. On uh, TikTok or Instagram, both? It's, yeah, as are my other customer up there. Fantastic. Pure rhodochrosite. Ortiz material. Yeah, if you didn't hear what we were just talking about, you can follow these folks on Armando Custom Cutter, Custom Rock Cutters? Yeah, Armando Custom Rock Cutters. Armando Custom Rock Cutters on TikTok and Instagram. And Definitely gem quality. Um, <clears throat> I'm not used to seeing a lot of this gem quality. 
I see very few pieces at the TCC in Tucson. That's from Peru. But uh, this stuff is fantastic. I have a piece at home that I am not planning on doing anything with. It's just stunning material. It is definitely silicated. Owyhee Blue. Somebody said the blue was called Owyhee Blue Opal. Owyhee, kind of like the Jasper, that the, the scene Jasper. Anyway, uh, yeah, and it's actually really affordable for its quality. That's something you're gonna have for the rest of your life. Ooh, thank you. Again, uh, Armando, Armando Custom Rock Cutters, or you can call Armando directly. Text, give him a text. Don't be bugging him all throughout the night. <laughs> Fool says, when I grow up, I wanna be able to cut cabochons like Armando. Me too. When I grow up, I wanna cut rocks like you guys. <laughs> yeah, you can come over for a chop. I would love to. Yeah, that's our TikTok now. All right, folks. Um, yeah, take and a screenshot then, or watch the video later. And then I'll show you my Instagram now. And it's not just a gallery of art. You can contact them there as well. Yeah. Dude, my TikTok got banned yesterday. Why? For no reason. It just said uh, I was showing dangerous stuff or something. Maybe from cutting or something. Someone just trolling me. So, yeah, but that's, uh, that's the Facebook. Yeah, that's the Facebook one. And then uh, you'll see the one that is on Instagram. <laughs> so I have to start a new one, Lapidary Dave 2, folks, if you guys are looking for me on TikTok. I know, it's crazy. TikTok is crazy, I think. Just <laughs> That's why I'm scared of using TikTok. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, you know how, like, when you do TikTok, you, it gives you the video in your gallery? Yeah. Don't get rid of them, just in case. Okay. I got rid of them, and now I have to start from scratch, but whatever. <laughs> Anyway. Well, it's awesome talking to you, man. Heck yeah. I It's just the music, like when I'm in town, the music takes over. Just it's like you play too much, then you have to rehearse. And then gotta make the videos and I'm never too busy for you, brother. I'm sorry, I haven't been getting to you more. That's a beauty. Yeah, that's one of our rocks that we have done, and it's wire wrap. Fantastic. On this one, it would be 100. LinkedIn slapped me for trying to share Greg Hunter's Watchdog USA. I don't think I know what LinkedIn is. Oh, yeah. Like when you uh, apply for a job? Yeah, LinkedIn. Yeah. Yo, brother, if you can ever get uncut Tabascos. Holla at me. I will. I want some. Yeah. Um, I think for your TikTok yeah. and for your Instagram, you could sell them for the same price as the pair, yeah. but then they cut live on a trim saw. Yeah. So it's like a mystery and a gamble and people are addicted yeah. to that. Okay. So like you don't have to lower the price just because they're uncut and unpolished. You could charge $12 for a Tabasco geode, cut it live on video with, with people watching and it'll blow up oh, and you'll yeah. be the Tabasco geode guy. Oh yeah, lately uh, I have my equipment but I'm scared of doing it. Oh, you'll get used to it, dude. Come on. I gain 30 pounds in every every Tucson and <laughs> so it's like you get used to it. You're a handsome man. Uh, are these from Chihuahua? Oh, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, no, Tabasco, yeah, duh. Yeah, oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that was a silly question. Yo, dude, I love you, brother. I'll, I'm going to go walk around. <laughs> Take it easy. Hey, brother, do you mind if I share some of your turquoise? Yeah, I'd rather not to do that. Anyway, I bought that I nice you. bench beads from you. That yeah, was, that was great. That was <laughs> yeah, that was fun. Nice. Barrett from Morocco. I lose weight doing shows and knees from doing miles. Interesting.
Very cool. I would have thought it was like weird looking smoky quartzes or something. That one. That amethyst and calcite, that one's spectacular. From Brazil. I polished a cab out of a piece of the, the crayon box. It has some veins, sky blue to clear, most, almost opalic, awesome. That's fantastic. Look at that over there. That is a great piece. Ram's horn selenite. A little hard for me to see from here. That azurite right there is stunning as well. Perfectpointcrystals.com. Where are you folks out of? Oh, heck yeah. That's awesome. Do you do any other shows? Oh, yeah. yeah. Mostly Midwest shows, but I'm out here for a few. Do you do like Denver or Tucson? Where are you in Tucson? 42nd Street. Oh, cool. Sweet. Uh, Best venue right now, I think. Yeah, it's good. My main thing with those shows is Bismuth. Bismuth, I grew up. Oh, cool. I'll come find you. Yeah, 22nd Street's just really popping off. I met a few people selling Sujolite who just bombed. But maybe <laughs> it was the price. You know. <laughs> If you don't mind me asking, who are you next to at 22nd? I was next to the Mexican guys who had the smallest dildo, city and dildo. Um, so, <laughs> is that, okay, <laughs> I know what you're talking about, but usually they have them in the back of the booth. They were like all the smallest city, Mexican, Mexican mm -hmm. Was so that next to... I'm surprised I didn't see you there. Yeah, it's a lot to see there. Oh, yeah. I was kind of like on the opposite end of the trucks. Okay. Yeah, near the outside's all the Brazilian stuff. Oh, cool. Was it your first year in 22nd? Yeah, it was my first year. It was our last year in Tucson. We were in, my grandma did Kino for 30 years. They doubled the price, which is okay, but then didn't tell us that they moved us. And location is 57% of the whole sales. And we sold out, my grandma makes drums. But if we didn't, it would have been devastating for <laughs> Heck yeah. And find the gentleman in the meantime on Instagram. Robert Head. Are you Robbie? He is Robert. <laughs> nice. He's got a UV light here. Don't think we'll be able to see too much. Uh, I guess the calcite is UV reactive. Lots of random cabochons here. Let's see if we can identify some. There's the Millie Fury, Bighorn Coral. Uh, kind of looks like some type of Mexican, maybe Sonoran Turquoise. This is what a lot of people call Gem Silica Chrysocola when it's just a silicated Chrysocola with Malachite. I prefer the term Malacola, uh, but it's still really cool. Some porcelain jasper, that stuff is obnoxious to cut because of how hard it is. Excuse me, sir, were you at the Stoddard Well show? No, you were at Joshua Tree. No? Oh, sorry. This is the only one outside the Denver metro area I do. I'm sorry, you look very familiar. Um, are you doing most of the cutting? I do all the cutting except for one stone here. This is the only stone I did not cut. I got it from a friend uh, out of Indonesia. It's uh, skeletal, uh, fossil coral, 
with micro druzy. Oh, fantastic. New material out of Indonesia. They found it earlier this year. He's got control of most of the stock of it. It's stunning. And uh, that's the only stone I... My wife, he posted a picture of a bunch of a number of pieces. Mm -hmm. He wanted... My wife wanted three of the pieces. <coughs> he offered me the lot for the, about the same price as the three pieces. So I said, I'll take the lot. And... There were 12 pieces in the lot. I have one left. My wife kept the three she wanted. <laughs> That's the way it goes, huh? Um, this, Victoria Stone? Victoria Stone is a man-made glass. From Japan? From, from Japan. It was developed in the late 60s by a gentleman named uh, Professor Ayamore out of Tokyo University. He was trying to make synthetic jadeite. He failed spectacularly. <laughs> yeah, that is a great way to put it. And uh, uh, he realized that this had potential as a, as a lapidary material. So he resigned his professorship and started manufacturing the material for sale on the lapidary market. Back in the 60s to the early 80s when he was still manufacturing the material, you could get it at about $10 a pound. He made it in 17 different colors. Oh, wow. Right now, if you can find any for sale, you're paying 2 to $3 a gram. Yeah, rough. For the rough. And, uh, yeah, I hear that they've been trying to make it and they just can't do well, it. Th there's a company that's come close, but their issue is that's the only color they've managed to produce is this blue. Uh, there's another company out of Kansas who's coming close as well. But his stuff, it, it, the price on the stuff is still in the in the uh, dollar to, to $3 a gram, depending upon the color and the quality of the material. Wow. So even for the new stuff. Man, I can tell you're really good. I've never seen the black before. That is really unique. Dude, you are that a great cutter. <laughs> um, I'm a cutter myself and I think I can pretty much, I can definitely tell you're using different finishing polishes. Two, mostly. Just two. Uh, let me guess. Cerium and an aluminum? Uh, uh, optical grade, cerium oxide on wet leather mm -hmm. for 90% of what I do. And uh, Lindy A on wet leather. Lindy A, which is kind of like the world's most premium aluminum. Dude, you are point really o, good. 0.03 uh, micron graded. It's all that. I tried almost all the other uh, powders, uh, alumina powders. None of them work as well as Lindy A. It costs much, much more than any of the other aluminas, but it works better. Robert, there's hundreds and thousands of hours here. Yeah. <laughs> I'm David, by the way. You are a spectacular cutter. Yeah. Well, it, you know, the way I have my equipment set up for me, I will sit down and spend hours just preforming, you know, and I'll do 50, 100, 150 stones, and then I'm on them on the dops. I use nails with super glue. Then I start working that whole batch through. But my machine is set up for production work. I use centered wheel. I've got a Genie. I use uh, a 60 grit centered wheel. Then I have a 220 centered wheel, which I only use for soft, soft materials like turquoise and stuff in that range. I Do you jump it. down from there, like to 140? 60 grit Nova. 60 Nova, the green ones. Weird. <laughs> I, can I can take a piece like this off the rough, um, rough grind and take the scratches and flat spots off of it in seconds in, in uh, probably 60 seconds to 90 seconds and have them completely out of there and I go to the 280 the 600 1200 if I need to go finer I have another set of wheels on another another shaft that I can put on so from 60 to 280 it'll, the 280 will take the 60 because it's not you know it's no nothing like 60 hard wheel scratches it's night and day we could talk hours about that itself but <laughs> dude you're probably you're one of the absolute best cutters here dude but hands I can down take, i can take a piece like this once it's on the dock 
I can take and finish this in 10 minutes. Dang. A, a stone that size in 10 minutes if I work that straight through. Thing is, I never work a single stone straight through because I would work 30 stones each grit working my way down <laughs> to do it. Um, Robert, if you don't mind me asking, since you're cutting so much different material and sometimes you need to, you would probably need more than six wheels, are you using the Genie adapter to switch off the right side for anything else? Yeah, I have another set, um, but like I said, I got the three course wheels, the, the, 60, uh, the 60 centered, the 220 centered, and then the 60 Nova, and then the other side has the 280, uh, 600, 1200, and then I have another adapter if I need it with uh, 3,000, 8,000, and 14,000, and I almost never use them. Mm. Yeah, um, would you use something like that on the Ford 8 since it doesn't, like, it takes, most people get their polish, whatever it may be, off of just wheels alone. Uh, I hear rumors about Meguiar's, headlight cleaners, and turtle wax, but I think most people will, to get a polish like yours or even close to yours. That's Lindy A. Lindy A with Fordite. <laughs> it can take the pressure without burning up? Yeah. Dude. You have to use it wet, wet leather. Okay, I just learned something. <laughs> I would have thought that it would have just burned up. I've tried um, chrome oxides, aluminum oxides, compounds though, which is waxy and I'm sure heats up and Yeah, melts. the compounds, the only, the only stuff I've used uh, essentially a compound on turquoise that's still chalky and won't quite polish. Then I'll use um, Zamulus, Fabuluster. No, I don't use Zam. I don't like it. Fabuluster is white in color. Mm -hmm. So you don't have that green residue left over. Oh, right. <laughs> um, and I use that on a hard felt buff and I will use it on this. It's Covalite? Covalite. Covalite. Yeah, it's I, copper ore from Montana. I hear it's the fire rare. Ore. Is it true? Oh yeah, um, especially since the mines have closed. All the mines at Butte are closed, uh, and majority of reclaimed. Uh, this uh, material on oftentimes has little tiny pits in it, where the pyrite has partially decomposed. If you take this, finish it with the cerium oxide, or Lindy A actually with this. Then clean it to get anything out of the pits. Take it over on the Fabuluster, on the buff, dry. It will actually flow the cold light and fill the little tiny pits. Oh my gosh. So you end up with this glass finish instead of, this one's still got a couple tiny pit. There's a tiny pit right there. And there's another one over there that didn't quite fill in. And a couple in the pyrite, because if it's in the pyrite, it's not gonna flow over the top of the the, the covalite won't flow over the top, but that is spectacular. Kind of, yeah, covalite when you can find it for sale, typically 150, uh, 150 for the lower grade material, 200. It's exceptionally heavy. Oh wow! A so a pound is about a piece about that. Just day. little <laughs> like a small baseball, not even a baseball. We, we have, I, I helped clean up a friend's estate. Uh, and he had, we filled a five gallon bucket with coke out of the stockpile. One of the pieces was the size of a basketball. None of us could pick it up. Oh my goodness. <laughs> it was probably 120 or 130 pounds just for one piece. <laughs> is this what they call bigs? There is a, there is a mixture of, uh, almost all of this is bigs. Is the other stuff Egyptian? This is down here is the Royal Sahara, uh, but most of this is bigs. Um, I, and the Royal Sahara, folks, is uh, is Egyptian, right? Yeah, the Egyptian. Material. And I hear nobody's been getting their orders lately, so it's like might be, you know, might be going up in price sometimes yeah. <laughs> if nobody's getting it. Yeah, that's still bigs. I do have some disputes somewhere, I think. <laughs> I've cut some, but I'm not sure if I've got any sitting around and that can readily be seen. Every single cab has a girdle on here, above and beyond. <laughs> the girdles, I mean, that's well, the difference you between. Cut a... these too, if you're trying to do earring pairs, what you do is you take your slab, you mark out your shape, 
trim it out, grind it. Mm -hmm. When you grind it, you don't put a bevel on it. You leave this, these, all the edges perpendicular to the face. F so flat. Yep. Perfectly flat. And then when you take it to the trim saw, I use a twenty-five thousand blade. Feed it through very, very slowly to get it to split as close to the middle as you can. And then you take both of them, set it off to the side, and let it dry. Why is the drying important? Because super glue won't attach to wet stones. Oh. <laughs> yeah. You got to have it dry. And you want to keep them together so you know which are the cut faces. So when you open it up, you've got perfectly matched faces. That's a great Otherwise, one. Otherwise, you don't have the perfectly matched. I mean, yeah. here's an example. Look how closely matched those no, are. Not just good match, but book match, too. Yeah, and that's how you get the book match is that careful split on the pieces like that to get them through. Oh. And when you first start doing earring pairs like that, you're going to lose 30 or 40% of them to hidden flaws that you didn't see where one half is going to crack away and the other's not <laughs> it's just the way it's going to be and or you got it a little off and one piece is super thin and the other one's super thick compared comparatively i'm really good at that <laughs> <laughs> and uh so i have a lot of little stones over here that were half veneering <laughs> in the stuff that's cut just because that happens Robert, I gotta ask, how long you been in the industry? I learned to cut when I was nine years old. I've been cutting professionally since I was ten. My cousin owned a rock shop, and he needed somebody to help help him because his kids knew how to cut but didn't want to do anything with it. And so he was looking for somebody, and I said, "Hey, I want to learn." So he taught me how to cut, and inside of a year, I was cutting for him. Oh wow! And I did that up until. Uh, I went to college, um, didn't really have access to anything in college. Um, no went, shoveling went, snow went, for went you. The, went in the military, the base I was stationed at didn't have lapidary equipment, so, but I bought my own and had it shipped to Germany. Wow, that must have been an arm and a leg. Actually, it was an additional $100 to ship the Genie at the time. Well, how much? hundred dollars to ship it to Germany. Oh wow! Um, and so I was cutting in in Germany, uh, and one of the big fun ones was uh, we had. Uh, I worked for the engineering uh, the director of engineering and housing. We were in charge of all the construction, uh, or I shouldn't say the construction, but maintenance of all of the military property for a three thousand square mile area. We had 700 sites in that area that we were responsible for, ranging right from the top of the uh, Feldberg Mountain to uh, the uh, main concern at uh, Carlton. And we went around, and um, I was asked to get to if we had to check if we had a bunch of supplies out in the yard for a project of one of the construction battalions wanted to do. I go out there and I start looking around. The whole floor of uh, the entire yard is crushed salt full of agates. Wow. And I asked my boss, where did that come from? And he says, uh, we get all our gravel from Waldhambach. How far from where you were? Uh, about 40 kilometers, but they had a contract and they supplied all the bases in that general vicinity, which was about 40 or 50 Army and Air Force bases with gravel, any gravel they needed. And it was, the quarries are basalt full of agates. And they, so I, I asked him, do I have permission to go out and pick agates out of the yard? And he said, what are you talking about? And I reached in my pocket, pulled out, showed him a couple of the agates. He said, sure, pick what you want. He says, we buy it in 100 ton lots, and we just use it to pave the, you know, to put out. The layer in the yard was 18 inches deep, and we covered almost three acres with <laughs> Oh my gosh. We so, picked up about 
500 pounds of agate, which, we, which the government, the army, paid to ship back. What a blessing. Do you still have a private collection of that agate at home? Oh, that's great. And you got your friends in on the action, huh? Just the only, the only rock hounds we knew were my, my wife and myself. Oh, that's a blessing. So, you, you met her in the service? No. We oh. met in college. got married while we were still in college. Oh, fantastic. And then uh, we both ended up in the military and uh, <coughs> uh, applied for joint domicile assignment. Oh, wow. So we, got, we got both got assigned to Germany. Robert, do you have a card? Because people are definitely... Um, I have a YouTube channel where I, I mostly teach people how to cut and cab, and I do gear review. The channel sponsored by um, Cutting Edge Supply and Diamond Pacific. But um, I don't sell anything really on my videos, but I love to get people information. If they could ever give you a, a text and maybe buy something that they see in the video, is that something they could do? That's something they could do. Um, I also um, post on five different Facebook groups, or six different Facebook group, groups, on a fairly regular basis. What's your most active ones? Uh, Rock Whispers, um, Cabochon Auction Place, and Cabs, Cabs and Fasted is Stone Auction. Fantastic. Those so are that's the three most active ones that I do. So I have others as well, but uh, if somebody's interested, they can just contact me over Facebook. It's just Robert Johannes on on Facebook. Uh, the my profile picture is a, is a pair of crazy lace baggy ears. <laughs> that is fantastic. <laughs> oh man, Robert is a genius when it comes to lapidary. I think. Anyone who's been listening for the last 20 minutes can definitely tell that. I'm going to take my backpack off and we're going to take a look at some of his other stuff. Because this dude's... Him and Armando are definitely hands down the best here. Some nice... Was that Royston? Yeah, Maybe I know, Hubert? I got to get the stones up. And they're under here. <laughs> Robert, you're bad to the bone, bro. <laughs> you're really good. I don't mean to interrupt while you're working, but do you happen to know what kind of turquoise this is just by looking at it? Uh, that one's uh, stabilized Kumo Bobby. Kumo Bobby? Kumo Bobby. Um, Never even heard a, of it. In the uh, 50s, there was a, it was a copper molybdenum mine that had turquoise associated with it. The, almost less than 1% of the material out of there is stable enough to cut without um, stabilization. That's a good price for such a huge piece. The gentleman uh, I got that from uh, brought me the first time, he brought me 17 pounds of rough. I got six stones uh, cut out of that <laughs> for him because that was all the material that was stable enough to actually cut. That was a life he lesson, though. So under, he was so upset, and I said, you've got to stabilize this material. Manasseh. You don't see a lot of people with Manasseh. Manasseh's from Colorado, folks, yep. if you don't know. Sometimes called King's Manasseh, or is that different? King's Manasseh. Um, it's, technically, it's the Lick Skillet mine. Lick Skillet. Yep. That's the original mine, um, and it's all... Um, I.P. King was the first miner, uh, and that's why they call it, you hear it called King's Manasseh. Interesting. So it was and, a gentleman's uh, name. Where the king came from? Uh, I.P. King was his name, and uh, he's the first one who started mining. And I think it was 1901, might be 1908. Um, and this is old stock material that came out probably in the 50s or 60s, um, when you could still get good material. They pretty much worked the mine out of. Uh, material that didn't need to be stabilized by the uh, late 80s. It was just gone. And uh, I bought the Manasseh I have because I was looking for, I wanted the, the specimen piece that was part of the collection. I'll be back. I'm going to look around. Okay. Okay. that? I know you're a busy man, Robert, but can I get your opinion I I on like, pricing uh, backed stones? I'll just ask them. I'll just ask them. Um, I typically, 
I look at what it would be if it was a uh, um, non-back stone, and I typically run it about half. That's my basis. Interesting. That's quite a bit. Half is a lot, especially when you're playing with carrot material. Well, you know, part of it's going to depend. Um, and it also depends on what I paid for the rough. Yeah, and what is the rough and so many you know, things. And um, You know, most of this Carico is on back. And all of the Miss Moffat is on back. The Leadville is all back because the stuff is too damn thin, in most cases, to do anything with. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you don't. Um, right. Anything that was a quarter inch thick out of that mine was exceptionally thick. It just didn't come any thicker. Um, just the way that uh, those mine, that mine was. And this, the Leadville I have left, all came out in 1957. It came from a state of a guy who worked the mine in the summer, summer of 1957, for the two Navajo uh, who owned the mine at the time. And he took his entire pay from them in uh, rough turquoise. Wow. He got a third of the turquoise he mined from them. Probably couldn't get away with that now, huh? Well, <laughs> you're not going to find too many people who will mine on shares anymore. Um, one of the last big guys to do that one um, was Ed Over, you know. Uh, and he worked for Arthur Montgomery, and he'd mine it, ship the stuff back to, to Arthur in, in New York to sell. And his share was done up, and he would sell to... Uh, Arthur would sell it for him. But he's the guy who found the Clay Canyon Verisite deposit. He mined on Ontario. He mined the Pikes Peak region. He mined all over the western United States. Anywhere there was crystals or uh, stuff, he probably was there one time or another. Uh, this is not Purple Passion. This is Agua Nueva. Purple Passion's other name is Percellus, right? Um, it can be. Um, you do see some of what most of what you see out there is purple passion is vein material. The Percellus and the Casa Grande are from the same location. This is all Casa Grande. It was I purchased this Casa Grande, but the same material is also sold as uh, Percellus. And the old name for it when it first came out, when there was a lot of purple in it was purple passion agate and it was nodular the stuff you find today is seed material interesting that's got it and they the the that material is also known uh, uh, quite often as sierra madre sierra agate. madre is all that hubei i don't know for sure wh wh where in china but i would guess so i tell folks all i get the question all the time in my lives is white buffalo a turquoise no it's not but that is white turquoise. It, it, they call it violet turquoise. Um, this isn't a hydrated, this is a phosphate, right? Right here? It is a copper deficient turquoise. The analysis on it shows that it has copper. It's a copper uh, aluminum phosphate, hydrous phosphate. But it has a much higher percentage of aluminum than you'd expect and a much lower percentage of copper. Does that mean it's closer to a verisite? Yeah. Interesting. But it still has copper in it. If you have copper in a hydrated uh, aluminum phosphate, you have uh, turquoise. If you have no copper, it's verisite. That is so cool. Because they're all kind of related. <laughs> Got a little excited there for a second. I just, I've heard the Audisons talking a little bit about finding legitimate white turquoise, not what they call white buffalo. White buffalo is not a turquoise. It's just absolutely clever marketing. Well, <laughs> some of the locations out there, um, when they first started, when they first discovered the white buffalo, had turquoise seams along with it. Really? That must have been yeah. beautiful. Um, and so when the analysis was sent in, 
uh, it came back. Their analysis, the original analysis they have, says that it is turquoise because they have the oh. turquoise with it. So they called it white buffalo turquoise, but the majority of the material is a solidified dolomite. And that makes a lot of sense. It's kind of like just like playing it off of the old name. Why change it if it's such a great name and I you can get away with it? The, the white buffalo I have, I just call it white buffalo. I don't say white buffalo stone, white buffalo sugar. I just say white buffalo. Agreed. That's what I do. <laughs> That's exactly what I do. Now, this is, is really unique because this is a piece of the violet turquoise as well. Is that from Kazakhstan? Kazakh? No, this is the Chinese as well. Oh, wow. It comes from the same location as this. But the analysis on the centerpiece shows almost no copper. There's still a little bit, but you get over into here and the percentages of copper and aluminum are right where you'd expect them for your standard turquoise. Oh, that is wild. I had two pieces. I had the facing piece that off this slab that had that white spot right in the center. And this is the one I have left of the two. That is amazing. What is something like that? What are you selling that particular piece for? Two dollars a carat. That's not good. That's such a good deal. <laughs> <laughs> your prices are really good for how much work you're obviously, in attention to detail, you're obviously putting into your stuff. Part, big part of it depends on what I got to pay for the rough, too. True, I mean. You know, that, that's where I look at it. Um, with a gray goatee. <laughs> wow, Robert. But this is what I do. <laughs> and you're really, really good at it. This is a material you don't, you probably will never see again. This is malachite <laughs> from Argentina. I've only heard of the Chinese and the Congolese. And the American, obviously, but there I've was, never heard of Argentinian. This material was from a single deposit at one of the copper mines in Argentina. Jose with Rodico. Heard about it. He went down to the thing and bought all of it at the uh, twice the value of the copper in it from the miners. Oh wow! From the copper from the mining company, they were happy to sell it. They didn't have to pay refining costs to get the copper out of it. It turns out every bit of it is chitoin. Majority of it was stalactitic, and it's every bit of it is chitoin. For those of I mean, you at home, if, go ahead. I'm sorry. For those of you at home that don't know what chitoin is. Uh, it's the light play in the stone, right? Yeah. Well, I mean, that looks like the African material, but look at how that... That's stunning. <laughs> the play of the chitoyancy in it. And it all... It was all that way. That is awesome. I bought that in the mid-90s. Uh, and in 2000, the dealer... The, de the two dealers... Uh, that I bought material from were calling me up and asking me if I had any of it left. And I go, yeah, I got most of it left. You want to sell it? No. <laughs> I don't buy rough to sell. I buy it to cut. Right. It may take me a long time to get to it, but I buy it to cut and not to sell. <laughs> That'll save a little bit of space at your house, too. <laughs> um, somebody at home asked if you had any more old stock agates. They're addicted to agates over there in California. Um, I do have, uh... I imagine old, you have it all over the place, yeah. really. Well, if they're looking for the old stock material, uh, stuff that no longer mines, uh, I have Virgo Paradise. Oh, wow, look at that. Is that, um, Argentinian? No, this is, uh, from Mexico. And the deposit's been worked out for a long time. Do you mind if I touch that piece? No, not at all. Would you consider this a plume or a moss? It often, it's mostly a, it's mostly a plume. The majority polish. of the material I got actually has, is more mossy, but you can see some of the, the plumy material in there. It's fantastic. Your polish is just spectacular, dude. Carey, C-A-R-E-Y, plume? No, I don't know what that is. I'm sorry, everybody. I, I do know what that is. Uh, I have some caps, but I'm not sure exactly what they have. Um, they want all the stock material of 
We were talking Sierra Madre earlier, the Purple Passion. Oh, that. wow. <laughs> um, do you mind if I hold that to take it to yeah. the what? Uh, yeah, just to. You need it under the best light. Because uh, that one's yellow and this one's white. Look at that. Jeez. Sierra Madre. I love that the gentleman's taking the time to label every single piece of what it is. Um, I think some people who just lay cabs into trays. Uh, did it go right here, my friend? Yeah. That lay uh, cabs in. Polyhedroid agate from Brazil. Oh, those are cool. I saw a gentleman at the TCC selling this. This is really unique. And I believe mined there's out, no more, right? Found a 1974 mined out within six months. Yeah. I've never been found again. I met a gentleman in, from Sweden at the TCC show who only collects and sells this stuff that grows into this triangular shape. It's completely gone. It's old, extremely unique. He did not cut it into the shape. This is natural. You can see the rind all the way around. I mean, he did slice it, but he didn't reshape it into this triangle. This is spectacular. You know why it doesn't matter? This is material. This is Wingate uh, plume or Death Valley plume agate. From so, the Katy Mountains? I'm not sure. It's uh, part of a uh, Tater Mountain uh, missile range and has been blocked off since 1964. Oh, wow. So it has some spectacular red orange plumes in the white agate. Rocky, yeah. Robert is absolutely a legend. Yes, you are right. <laughs> Jeez Louise. Dryhead, of course, is no longer found. Morrisonite is not uh, mined anymore. Hasn't been since 1994. This is called Morrisonite? That's Morrisonite Jasper. It has to be named after someone with that name, huh? It's not far from the Morrison Ranch in uh, um, Oregon. How you doing there, Largent? Wow, so unique. Uh, yeah, these are like museum quality pieces. This gentleman is no joke. And a lot of people, you know, it's really difficult to display a lot of cabs. I like that you don't put a cover on them because you do kind of have to touch it to really want it. But, I think when they're congested, sometimes people are intimidated. They won't be intimidated with you because every single piece has a label with the price and what it is. Yeah. What, <laughs> I have stuff on consignment with a couple of rock shops in the Denver area. And so I may know what it is, but they're definitely not going to. So for the last 25 years, I have printed labels for everything. That's great. So that they're there. And it helps if I'm not at the booth, and my wife is, because she doesn't know what most of this is. Uh, and she can walk over and say, yeah, this is whatever. Robert, this isn't Tiffany Stone. This is Bertrandite, right? No. That is uh, Spurriite from Mexico. The is it an variety. opal? No. It is a the mineral Spurriite. S-P-U-R-R-Y-I-T-E. I do have somewhere here a tray with the Tiffany Stone um, pieces in it. I'm not sure. <laughs> like most of the stuff, I'm not sure where it's at. Because <laughs> I cut so much stuff. Oh, yeah. It's evident. <laughs> um, this is something your viewers will probably never see again. This is a material called, by, they call it Bayouite. Um, only one person have I ever seen have any of this material. I got this from his estate. The was rough it material. Rough? Yeah, rough. Uh, it was rough, and then I cut it. But um, it's a soft material, but it takes a glassy polish. But where it's from, exactly what it is, got no clue. Do you think no. it might have anything to do with the bayou? Um, he got it when he was down in Florida, and he picked it up from a gentleman in Louisiana. Oh, that's that's, that's where the I story know. ends. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, I do have some old stock Tiffany. Oh, I've never seen it pink before, ever. Was that just a more common color back in the day? No. 
<laughs> but as soon as I saw it, I grabbed it. <laughs> oh, I gotta take that to the white light if you don't mind. Yeah. Jeez Louise. Never seen Pink Tiffany. And there's also this one with the quartz cluster up the top. Oh, that is amazing. left on it. That is stunning. I don't know if you wanted me to put that in your hand. I'll put it back. It, it Sorry, works fine. I hope I'm not bombarding you. No. I don't have a whole lot of customers. <laughs> Well, spec oh, I, gar I guarantee it, dude. I absolutely guarantee it. I already know people who are watching who are going to be uh, messaging you. Um, Spectrolite, it's the premier Labradorite. It's not a Labradorite, it's, it's from it Finland. It's from Finland, yeah. You're, it's you're completely correct. Um, the main difference on it is the translucency. I do have some of the uh, Madagascar material up here if you see how translucent that is you take a piece of this and no light comes through it it's got a black body color which i think makes the color stand out absolutely so much more um and if you can hit this one with your camera to the right angle so the colors show up i don't know what it takes oh to i saw it for a second <laughs> yeah uh, I that's what i was saying you need to handle that one and, and move it the right way for your camera but look at that that is an absolutely insane piece um unfortunately i do see a lot of i wouldn't use the word counterfeited but faked not faked i see people selling labradorite as spectralite because it has purple in it that's not true at all it's not spectralite spectralite is regional nope. like champagne or yeah. bur or uh, tennessee you, like you, bourbon the Finnish government actually has a international copyright on the term Spectralite. That's a good but, idea. <laughs> um, to help support their miners. This material is found in Gabbro Dykes up in the area of this one village. And the unfortunate problem is, is they are so far north, they're close to 200 kilometers north of the Arctic Circle. Their mining season is six to eight weeks during the middle of the summer. Oh, wow. But they can mine 24 hours a day because the sun doesn't set. <laughs> oh, that's crazy. But uh, it, it's like the spectra, or like the Labradorite. You've got to cut it with that plane to get the color. Right. And if, you know, with this, if you get it off, you still have color because it's so translucent. The light will still go in. This, if you're off by more than three degrees, off that perfect <laughs> parallel plane, you got a black rock. I tell people, I, <laughs> I used to do a lot of commission cutting and I would always have people who would buy the $4 a pound Labradorite really cheap from wholesalers thinking that they're gonna get quality flash material. You have to buy a big rock, find that axis, chase that axis, follow the slabs back, then you can begin to cab. It is hard work. Um, I would say 95% of the time, affordable, like four, five dollars, six dollar Labradorite rough isn't really worth cutting. You're lucky if you find a piece with some flash and leave it as is. Every once in a while, you might be able to get one or two pieces out of it, but anyway, Damali. Is this a Verisite or a turquoise? I don't remember. Anyway, I see that there's 135 of you folks watching and only 63 of you like the video. Please like the video. Uh, check that out. $10 a carat. Some precious, unstabilized Damali. Damali, Damali. So, this gentleman, Robert, where did it come from? It came from right here. You can tell all of his cabs are pretty darn perfect. Everything is real nice and even. He puts nice girdles on all his pieces. So why is this piece different? Why is it asymmetrical on the dome? Why is it fat on this side and low on that side? Well, because the material is worth so much money. Most of his pieces are obviously cut for pattern and for shape over size. I was telling people, almost every one of your cab is perfectly symmetrical and even. Why is this one not? Well, because it's so darn valuable, mm -hmm. you know? Alexis. Yeah, that camera. Um, camera that failed is, on me. Uh, high grade Damali. Probably underpriced for the size and quality of the stone. 
<laughs> yeah. So that's why uh, it's a little asymmetrical. It's just it's such a valuable material. It'd be straight sacrilege to um, waste the material. I mean, to even that out to the lowest spot, you're probably going to throw away... Two-thirds of the stone. Yeah, I mean... Oof. So the gimbal has officially died. We are free-handing it now. <laughs> oh, Robert, I cannot thank you enough, my friend. Um, my channel's name is Lapidary Dave. Check oh, it out. I've seen, I've seen your stuff on, uh, on YouTube from uh, doing your walk around at Tucson. Yeah. <laughs> and um, usually I don't spend, like, an hour at somebody's booth like I did you, but you are just so brilliant. You have so much knowledge. And I cannot thank you enough for the just straight up education you gave me, dude. Not a problem. Um, this is what what I do uh, now. I retired after 27 years working for the state of Colorado, and um, this is what I do for a living. Just cut stones. <laughs> You're great at it. Uh, real quick, before we wander off, I'm gonna show the card one more time. Give him a. Uh, Hit him up on yeah. check out his Etsy. You know, yeah, I do have I do have some stones on Etsy. We have more wire wrap work. My wife's wire wrap work on there as well. Um, Robert is great, Largent forty five. He is amazing. Uh, email him. Uh, I don't know if you accept texts. Yeah, and not at that number um, because that's my. Um, Here you go, my friend. Landline. Believe it or not. It's a landline. <laughs> oh, gosh. That is crazy. Oh, thank you, my friend. Give him a text if you saw anything you're interested in. I bet you, since this gentleman cuts all his own stones, if you texted him a screenshot from something you saw in the video, he'd probably know exactly where it is. He'd probably be able to find it. <laughs> <laughs> um, a lot of people are going to want to know, do you ship international? I do at cost. Exactly. Um, I'm not sure of the uh, for Germany, since their new rules went into effect January, uh, July 1, uh, requiring recycled packaging. Interesting. <laughs> How to handle that one, but shipping in and out of the country over there, you have to use recycled packaging. And I haven't verified, I got to talk to one of my Facebook friends in regards to that. She lives there in Germany. So after the video is over, I'll obviously put Armando and Robert's contact information in the description section below. Uh, the Etsy is Amethyst. Amethyst Rosco. <clears throat> so I was going to leave him alone, well, but... Take the card with that oh, one. thank you. Got my number on the back. Perfect. And keep it. <laughs> thank you, Robert. So if you get contacted, and you can give him my information. Absolutely. Um, all of... The, so there's nephrite jades. Is that penalite? That, that's a penalith, yeah. Penalith. Yeah. Turkish lavender jade. A lot of people love to argue about that stuff. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and these are from Myanmar. Yeah, majority of that. This one belongs over here. It's Siberian. Uh, this is the Magnetite and Jade. Uh, that's Pyrite and Jade. I'm not sure where it's from. I got three slabs uh, out of an estate. Uh, this is Wyoming Black. Oh, wow. Um, I do have a couple pieces of Wyoming Apple Green in here. Um, and one piece of mouse it. This is Russian white nephrite. Very beautiful. Um, it's not by far the best piece. I think it's spectacular. I like the... Oh, he's going to show me what for right here. Masitsit, if you folks don't know, is uh, kind of one of the most treasured stones from Tibet. Uh, I think he said this was the Masitsit. Some people call it a jade. I think it just might have jade in it. <sighs> I wish I knew. My friend was to get her to man the camera so I can go to the bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> so 
Sounds like a person that might buy a slab no one else is cutting. Oh, for sure. This gentleman has tons of unique material. I'll buy it from you and give it to Robert. That explains why the last thing I bought on eBay came from an old cereal box. Very interesting, Liberace. Sorry I missed so many, so much of the chat, folks. I'm just trying to be kind and speak to the gentleman while we're having a conversation instead of reading the chat. It's a great stream. Thank you, Moxie. White Russian nephrite. Boom. <laughs> Milky. That is stunning. That is bloody fantastic, dude. Hundred and twenty-two carats, only two hundred dollars. Good luck finding any more, folks. Yeah, definitely wow, folks. I had the one piece with the green and the white in it. All the rest of it I got was solid white, or white and honey colored. Do you mind if I touch it? Not at all. It's kind of dense. Again, really nice girdle. Mm -hmm. This would be a really nice cuff, or even a pendant. Placket type pendant. Oh, Two yeah. chains coming down. Absolutely. F fine jewelry. <laughs> In gold. <laughs> um, you know, I didn't see any, but I'll ask the gentleman. Uh, folks at home want to know, do you have any number eight? Uh, no, I do not. I didn't see the, any. The only number eight I have, uh, is in my, uh, especially the web material, is in my personal collection. Awesome. And it's old stock natural material with black webbing. Oh, very cool. <laughs> it ain't going nowhere. <laughs> Heck yeah. Robert, it's a pleasure, Take my friend. You, Dude, you were awesome. I'm going to come back and bug you tomorrow if you don't mind. I will be here as long as we're not too busy. I'll be oh, absolutely. I'm pretty good at gauging, like, when to walk away. <laughs> that is super cool. Robert was one of a kind. Unfortunately, you only do this show, right? In the Midwest, you said? Well, out of, out of, I don't go out of Colorado anymore. Uh, the last one, I, the only one that's ever done out of Colorado is the place at Agadex Road in Cedarburg. Oh, awesome. Um, but, was uh, that uh, Texas? Cedarburg, Wisconsin. Oh, okay. But I drove through to see my family. Oh, I, nice. I grew up in Minnesota, so. Um, what about Buena Vista? Um, I go there to shop. I don't. It's brutal. I've yeah, I, I've been many times. Happy I came back. I forgot my backpack. It's got more spoon chunks in it. Yeah, don't, <laughs> don't forget that one. <laughs> Thank you, Robert. Take it easy, my friend. That guy is one of a kind. Unfortunately, folks, the gimbal has died. So we are freehanding it now. Uh, kind of balances itself. Not really. That's oh, okay. I've had worse. Great video. Thank you. No, thank you, Mount At. I really appreciate you. The Pearl is fantastic. I have a Pearl addiction, actually. It's a dirt show. Oh, yeah. Uh, Buena Vista is definitely a windy, dirty show. Very spectacular polish. From afar, I would have thought that that rhodonite was uh, the Norwegian toolite. Miscellaneous slabs for two bucks. These are not bad. It's a nice piece of moss. Let's see what's in here. That looks like some kind of nephrite. Some kind of metallic included nephrite, perhaps. Really cool moss here. Is that Chihuahuan moss? Almost looks like barrel cactus. Every single one of these are worth, looks like, at least 10 bucks. 
I'm gonna have to buy a couple. Do you folks take a card? Oh no, do you take a card? Oh, I take a card. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. We'll take a card. Uh, is this some, card. some kind of nephrite? My eyebrows are so bad. I can't tell. Oh, wait. <laughs> no. I don't think so. How would you tell with what you just did there, if you don't mind? Because of the, the glow through the stone? Yeah, it's kind of somewhat translucent and you get the glow inside it. Oh, interesting. I'm sorry, I don't know hey. what it is off the top of my Well, it's going to cut really nice. And yeah, it's, it looks nice and hard. And $2, you can't get uh, a soda for 2 bucks nowadays. I know. <laughs> so I'm not going to bug you for 2 bucks. I'll pick out a couple pieces. Cool tiger iron, piece of petrified woods down there. Oh, where are you folks from? Here in town. Uh, Durango. Yeah. Durangatans. We are. <laughs> She's actually a native. We're born here. Oh wow. How about yourself? Where are you from? I live in Taos. In Taos. Mm -hmm. Are you vacationing, or did you come up for the show? Just for the show. I go to all the bigger gem shows and film for YouTube. My channel is Lapidary Dave. I mostly do like Tucson and Denver, but this one was too close to home to pass up, and it ended up being fantastic. This is always <laughs> a good show. You know, it's a good medium-sized show. Do you have a card? I don't, my friend. I'm sorry. Okay. Just Lapidary Dave on YouTube. <laughs> we'll look for you, man. Thank you. Um, no, I'm not. I'm sorry. I. Is it okay if I just get these three with a card? I don't mind paying like a fee for the card or what. I'll pay a dollar fifty, two dollars. We can call it eight bucks for the three slabs. I know how it is, dude. <laughs> yeah. Um, did you do these cabs here? Yep. All of those. We cut the slabs and did the cabs. You must be using cerium, huh? Actually, most of them we take to fourteen thousand on our. Just TV. wheels. Just the wheels. <laughs> oh wow. Um, yeah. We. I mean, we used to polish, but. Oh, sorry, my friend. Hang on until I get it all set. Yeah, no here. problem. All right, eight bucks. Eight dollar. How much for your dino? Eight. Eight bucks. That's not bad. No, it's not. Well, I'll go ahead and get these two. Uh, sweet Jim, if you're watching, these are ten dollars for you. <laughs> <laughs> but those are good. Those are good. You can buy, like, affordable rough from Quartzite and not even get one piece that nice, you know? Yeah. Well, I mean, we're club members. This is a hobby for us. Mm -hmm. You know, we're not really big-time dealers. So we just try to get rid of the, some of the rocks, and then we get to keep some ourselves, you know? I just want to spring this and let you see. Oh, look at that. Oh, yeah. That is spectacular. Sweet stuff. You know, a cab like that in California where I just was, 150 bucks. I should, I should wait to buy it before I tell you. I do all my own cutting. All right. Prices just gone up to $20. No, oh, geez. <laughs> you know, I was um, just wandering with some friends in Pagosa near that Chimney Rock place, I think it's called. Uh -huh. And I found a beautiful piece of dinosaur bone over there. Took it to a specialist. It was white celled, and he said it was some kind of sea mammal. But it had purples and greens and yellows. And I gave it to my friend Andy. And who knows where it is now. But it, it looked like it was on a base because it was just popping out of the surface. Uh, probably the best find I ever found. Oh, it was almost the whole bone. I should have took a picture of something before giving it away. Oh my gosh. <laughs> yeah, I find a, a lot of stuff, but I never found a real piece of gem bone before. A lot of stuff on the way to being Jimbo. Right, right. It's worth it starting, she just doesn't quite make it. Mm -hmm. Maybe, we'll just bury it, maybe in a couple million years. <laughs> I'll come back and find it. Um, do you do all your cutting and your slabbing at the club? Um, we used to, not anymore. We used to. Um, the club has gotten so popular Oh, right. So it, you have to kind of stand in line to wait for a slab song. Oh, and that's a long time. And Even a good one. <laughs> right. So, um, we recently purchased a genie, and then we um, got slats on ourselves. Um, so, with the genie, 
do you replace your 3000 and go 12 to 14 or do you use an adapter and pop it off and pop it you use an adapter uh, what else do you use besides the 14 on your adapter we got the Syrian wheel cool do you like it but I know it's okay it mm -hmm. but I don't even need it okay you know, so that's <laughs> so it doesn't get a lot of use I've never used it myself uh, yeah I'm not sure it's worth it up to a 50, I think, was the next step. Yeah, you could go to 50. It might even go higher. Yeah. Maybe. Yeah. The guy that we got the wheel from said, are you doing this for professional stuff? And we went, no, we're just doing it for us. Did they ask because it's so good? He says, no, he, he just asked me what. Because we would kind of get a 50. Mm -hmm. and, and he said, do you need it? Uh, you called Diamond Pacific, or were you buying it from someone else? We have a, a friend that's a dealer. Oh, cool. He used to work at Diamond Pacific. I just okay, became a dealer. Still? Oh, you did. Yeah, I um, my YouTube channel is sponsored by Diamond Pacific. That's why I asked about your arbor. Oh. And uh, it's really good to know. So let, <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Let's do it just before this fades away. It doesn't give me a whole friend. lot of time. Was it total? Hey guys. Hi. Hi. Good to see ya. Forty. Just getting busy. <laughs> is this from Silverton? Mm -hmm. Yes. Oh, cool. Really nice. All right. So I'll go wrap these up. Forty dollars. Left-handed signature, boom. Perfect. I don't really care anymore. <laughs> I usually just draw cats. I know. I do. Just kidding. <laughs> I do an X usually, but. Oh man, what a deal! Thank you. I'm oh, yeah. I'm David, by the way. Yeah, David, Randy. Randy, it's a pleasure to meet you. There we go. Randy Ferris. Oh my. Born of fire yeah, and flame. <laughs> do you do any other shows besides this Durango one? Uh, we haven't yet. We keep having people ask us to, and we haven't yet, but we might. Do you go to Tucson at all? We've never been to Tucson. We've you have to go. Leave several. your wallet at home. Oh, I know. Yeah, we've been to <laughs> before. Very cool. We're going to take a look at some of their materials. Uh, do you sell online at all? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> well, your prices are too good, so when you do, make sure to bring them up some. Oh, I know. I know. <laughs> we try to keep them good at the show. Yeah, keeping it real. Thank you for your kind words. Oh, uh, yeah, no, thank you for the sweet rocks. Pink Lady Plume. That's pretty popular. Yeah, that's the only one we got left. It's a lot different than traditional, like, graveyard. It comes from, according to the lady we got it from, it comes from the same hill as graveyard, but it's a little bit Wait, lower. Isn't Pink Lady also an opal? Does an opal come from there? It might. It very Interesting. Well I know there's a pink opal. I think it's called Pink Lady. Yeah. How much? Twenty bucks. That is too good of a deal. I'm gonna be here tomorrow. I just gave you my card, so that I can make it around before my phone dies. I'm not gonna do it now, but if it's here tomorrow, it's mine. Hopefully, okay. It's still here, but it's probably gonna be gone. <laughs> like I say, that's the only one. We got left, so. <laughs> Jackie, yeah, that is super fantastic. If you want it, Jackie, I can pick it up and mail it to you. I have some original dig from North Point. Oh, interesting. Dave's kind of a big deal. No, you are, Liberace. Bruno, how you doing, my Brazilian friend? You have Snowflake out on the saw. Interesting. Anyway. Oh, thank so you. So that you would know which one was which. Mm -hmm. and so the dino bones in one, and then your slabs that you picked up were... Okay, so how many dino bones were there? If there was four... Oh, okay, because I was going to say, you only charged me 40 bucks. Right. And there was three slabs, so if there's four times eight is what? 32. Okay, plus eight. Okay, we're good. I'm just making sure that you're not... Ourselves. Yeah, I mean, you might at this point yeah. of the day. I can tell you. <laughs> it is late in the day. No, thank you. If you don't mind, I'm gonna look at some of your stuff. Yeah. Cheetah Jasper. I would have thought that was Tiger Tail from afar. It's brilliant that you have the cab right there, so they can, because it's it can be quite different. People like it a lot. I really can show you. I'm gonna see you say for this right? That guy's ten. Ten. I got six. This area is now closed. Mm -hmm. You can't get into it. It's in the middle of an Air Force bed. Oh, wow. So you're really not getting in there. <laughs> not getting in there to that one. <laughs> so it's like a dendritic 
uh, Jasper. Super silicated. Newberry Mountain. I wonder if that's from the Katy area. The Katy Mountains. Texan Red Moss. This looks really cool. This almost looks like barrel cactus. It's brilliant that they have these little stands, and it's super simple. It just makes sense because if the stone is dry, you're not seeing all the character. So I see there's 140 of you watching, and only 89 of you have liked. Do me a favor, please like the uh, video. The super chats are always nice, but the likes are what bring more people in and help YouTube to push me. I actually just got banned on TikTok yesterday for no reason at all. I was doing a video. Um, I was doing a video teaching people how to drill by hand. And it just, my the video ended. It says, you've been permanently banned for violence. How much for the... For the Herkimer diamonds? I didn't see any Herkimer diamonds here. But somebody will have some. My favorite Herkimer diamonds people are just Herks. That's the shirt I have on. The super nice ladies from uh, the, the Soul Family Farm. Blue River, that's spectacular. They're really clean. Um, did you do all the slabbing? Um, yes. I, I kind of think so because Different blades leave different finishes, and they all seem like the same finish. Actually, no on this. But nice. yeah, pretty much everything else I think we did do the slapping on. Uh, how do you clean the oil off? We use soap and water. Okay. We also do uh, kitty litter. So. Yeah, kitty litter takes too long for me. Yeah. To oh, try. Have patience. Yeah, I, I like that Dawn power sprayer. Uh-huh. But then, like, I don't know. It's Yeah, patience is where it's at. I where, where can you buy that here? <laughs> Yikes. Do you... Oh, look at these. Those are cool magnets. I don't. Can I have a lemonade now? I've been waiting so long. Thank you. Come on. I... Please. <laughs> what is it you need? A lemonade to... to for my electrolytes. I won't tell anybody. <laughs> Five to twenty dollars. Um, that is too cheap. <laughs> yeah, man. I don't. I. Sometimes I feel like. I mean, I didn't mean any disrespect by saying that, by the way. <laughs> Whoa. Look at these dino bones. That one has to be $25. That is spectacular. Thank you so much, ma'am. You're such a blessing. Uh, Mm -hmm. uh -oh, uh -oh. <coughs> Thank you so much. So if everything in here is 10 to 25, this one has to be 25. Yeah. Super nice cells, really consistent color, no crust. Little bit and a fissure back there, but it's not in the face. Really good, only to 14,000. But you know what? If you do it right, you can get a better polish at 3,000 grit. If you take your time and do it right, then you can uh, using fancy compounds and stuff, and that's just a fact. Do you use Diamond Pacific wheels? They're the best. And I promise to goodness, I'm not just saying it because the channel is sponsored by Diamond Pacific. It leaves a better finish at the same grit. 3,000 on Diamond Pacific is better than... 3,000 on Johnson Brothers. Yeah, thanks for saying it. I wasn't gonna. <laughs> yeah, that's a, it's a truth, though. It's the truth. And they're, those guys are friends. I'm friends with them, too. I'm friends with... But just... Novas are the best. Of the best. Yeah, I was sure the gentleman and lady were using cerium on that because it's just liquid. 
They are harder. Interesting. Is that why? Been called in for pizza game night. Thanks, Dave. No, thank you, War Antique, and thank you for supporting Sunny Gem. Hey, Jimmy, I just bought you some dinosaur bone. I'll show you. Check it out. $20 a piece. Just kidding. Just, yeah, just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> he's a, he's uh he's my business partner. He got me uh he actually got me the sponsorship with Diamond Pacific. This guy will like call and be like, this kid's on YouTube, he's great. He got us uh just starting to work with a few other people I don't want to mention right now because there's a lot of people watching, but anyway, Jimmy, nice super stable cellular dyno in here. I picked it up for you. How you doing there, Chelster? Oh, I'm sorry, my friend. Oh, you gotta see this piece. I'm gonna lick it. Okay. <laughs> Look at that, Jimmy. Picked you up, you and Sandy, some nice dino from these fine folks here in Durango, Colorado. You owe me. Just kidding. You can take it off, take it off my tab. He took me to the Las Vegas Gem Show, and I owe him money now. <laughs> anyway, these folks are super duper kind. Sorry if the video is a little bit shaky. It's because um, my gimbal died. Excuse me. Um, are you folks at the, you folks vend in um, the Holodome or Gem Mall in Tucson? No, he doesn't do Oh, okay, sorry. <laughs> Oh, that's great. Yeah, it is gorgeous dino bone. I had to get it for Jim because I know he's addicted to this stuff. And this is some of the best stuff for the... It was $8 a piece. It was just crazy. Right. <laughs> My dingle died? Maybe I did say that. I'm super tired. Uh, I said gimbal. I think this gentleman might be from Taos. Really nice pieces. Uh, my spidey senses are telling me that I'm gonna get yelled at if I film this gentleman's stuff. Wow, nice cobble bracelet, $6,500. I can tell a few pieces, there's Lone Mountain, some Royston, uh, Kingman for sure. The crusty stuff, I would bet money is Lone Mountain. The light blue there and some of the darker forest greens are definitely Royston. And then Mediterranean coral, this stuff. Oh, and gold nuggets. Uh, you know, I'm in Taos, it's 7,700 feet, but honestly, uh, just dehydration, just being overweight. Really super cool. This is really cool. Different type of cobblestone. Uh, is that an Ethiopian in the middle? It has a fracture, but it's still spectacular. Looks like 14 karat gold. And the turquoise kind of looks like uh, Royston. And more Royston. Some nice ultramarine-ish ultramarine lapis. Maybe a piece of dino bone up there in the corner, on the top. Very, very good artist. Uh, maybe we'll come back later and chat with the gentleman. He just seems a little busy and I don't like to interrupt. I like that he polished the nugget. If the nugget is hard enough or if it's been stabilized, you can actually just polish the nugget. I beg your pardon. Um, you folks are definitely the designers, right? Um, some of them. Okay, they're spectacular. Oh, really? What's the turquoise? North Star, you were at Jogs. You were taking a video of our eagle vlog. Mm-hmm. Yeah, thanks for watching. And I would, I would have liked to interview, but it was just busy. And I get it. <laughs> you know, I didn't want to bother you at Jogs. That's probably a big money maker. But um, North Star, can, is this North Star right here? Fantastic. And um, does it ever have to be treated sometimes? Not really? Any of our Jeez. If it's soft, it will Oh, wow. 
you know, it's nice that you throw it out instead of selling it, because then someone will stabilize it and bastardize the name. That's brilliant, what you're doing. <laughs> and that eagle is stunning. Did it sell? Good. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. Um, do you mind if I see the belt buckle? Oh, thank you. So if you folks don't know what we're talking about, these folks were vending at the jog show. I got very little footage there, so I think I just put it into another video, like with a bunch of stuff. Look at that. Is it made by the Effie family? RB. That's a huge natural nugget. Light polishing on the outside, but it's probably done with like buffing wheels. Little bit of grind right there. Is it ground to um, maybe remove an undesirable color? I didn't realize Taos was that high. Oh, yeah, 7,700 in places. You know, it can be a little bit different, but it's a good. Oh, I don't really want to ask because it's kind of rude, I feel, but it's probably at least seven, eight thousand dollars $8,000. Do you folks know what that texture is right there? Let me know. Do you know what that texture is? I'll give you a hint. It's casted. Oh, was your friend selling coral? Was he um, Ethiopian? So if you folks don't know, I'll wait for at least someone to comment before I give it away. Cuttlefish, yep, you are right. That is made from a little squid, squid beak. And it leaves that texture. I think cuttlefish texture is awesome. That wasn't carved into there using, um, it wasn't carved using like a drum or anything. That is a natural texture of the cuttlefish. Uh, you, you'd be, you don't see as much cuttlefish as you used to. But uh, it's fantastic. Really? Elvin? Alvin Yellow Horse. It's mind blowing. And look at the bottom here. These are not bolo ends you're gonna find anywhere else. Those are hand fabricated for sure. How you doing, my friend? Good. How you doing? The stone in this is this material here in the bolo. North Star Turquoise. Well, this stone was our last mine in the Smithsonian. That turquoise there, 30 pounds of it exists in the world. Oh, wow. So it's pretty rare. But why it's different is because most turquoise runs aluminum phosphate, copper for blue, iron for green, silica if it's hard enough to cut. Mm -hmm. That particular deposit is actually running calcium, calcite, rare earth minerals higher than normal on the gem silica, along with the aluminum phosphate, copper, and iron. So it's different than anything that's ever so just been found. Extremely chemically unique, and there's only 35 it'll, pounds. It'll cut in there. What? That's it's that hard. It's that Would it be safe to say one of the hardest turquoise has ever found? Yes. Dude. Yeah. And it's this material? Yes. Oh my goodness. Is this in the rock? Feel that. Feel the nugget. Oh that's man. Soft, that's highly silicone. Jeez Louise. This nugget is fantastic. Our regular turquoise. Gentleman's box right there. I'll wait over here. I'll show you something you've never Um, should I come around to the front, you think, maybe? Oh, thank you. These folks are super kind. <laughs> Puppy! So this is our regular stone. We actually, babe, let me see your earrings. Seven years ago, we got top recognition in the world through AGTA for the highest gem quality be in mine. This is a two millimeter. These are cut just like diamonds with 48 cuts. <laughs> They're faceted. That is incredible. Which is out of this vein. So you can take a quartz crystal to the turquoise. You can hear how hard he's digging in there. That is no joke. You look at the turquoise, you see the powder? You wipe the powder off. That's from the quartz, what? And you'll eat the quartz. Ah! The That's super hard. Are you folks the first miners of this material? Nope. I've oh, actually mined there for 25 years. I've actually found artifacts between two to 3,000 years ago. 
Oh, wow. That was on my bloodline, either the Iroquois or the Blackfoot. So That's my blessing. So people stone first before anyone ever did. That is fantastic. I didn't know it was First Nation owned. 10,000 feet. Dude, you must got some monster lungs then. Well, <laughs> I smoke every day. <laughs> well, that's the secret there. <laughs> well, I think it's more excitement than anything. Yeah, it's just such a natural high on life. It's, it is. in my opinion, better than finding diamonds. It is. You know what I mean? Because. Well, we've got four different finds in the Smithsonian. That was our last one. And my boy put his first one in, which he hasn't gotten his paperwork back from Dr. Mike yet. And it was a piece of foul spire and smoky quartz. And it had little white dots that looked like Amazonite. You flip it over and it was a vein of turquoise. Oh my goodness. The only mine in the world with that deposit. What? Yep. And I was talking to your wife. I love what you do by not selling uncuttable stuff. Right. Where people would just, it would kind of ruin the name. There's a lot. Kingman, ice. for instance, destroyed. Yeah, no, I, destroyed. You look under that bench, I got a little bit of rock. I control the market of our turquoise because it's precious and I get to decide who it goes to and how much of it goes out. On average, average piece, everyday piece, well, it's not an everyday material, but an average piece, how much per carat, rough? Um, it goes from five dollars to. Oh, that's very affordable. Ten, yeah. I was thinking forty to no. fifty a carat. No. For well, the... on the rare earth, I get forty dollars a carat on cut stone. The rough goes for twenty dollars per carat. Ah, huh, so it's affordable. <laughs> it's not like landing. I have the paperwork. It's been certified, and there's only thirty pounds in the world of it. Holy smokes, so dude! Very reasonable. You're giving me goosebumps. I'm a turquoise fiend, <laughs> and uh, that's my passion. This is five dollars a carat. I can't pick them up. There's no backing. We're solely cut underwater. You can throw them on the concrete. Oh man, you just scared the crap out of me. Oh, you scared me, dude. That's hard. What? Yeah. Yo, go. Go ask the Audisons to do that. Well, Dave will do that. <laughs> Yo, for I real. I know Dave really well. No, they're sweethearts. They're yes, good people. Dave is awesome. I don't know Dave. Is Dave the old timer? Yes. Uh, I, I know Danny wife. more than the Dave, but Dave's a cool guy too. No, Dave is like the best. He's, yeah. I would do anything for them. Yeah. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, but this is really reasonable. And then this one's eight. natural. We actually provide a cert with our turquoise. Which that one, we're the only ones that do. So mm -hmm. we're certified through AGTA, ICA, ADS, and Gold Corporation memberships. We're leading demologist in the country. The same one that certify any other gemstone. Super interesting. Um, which is a great idea because it's not getting any gem, less rare. Gem turquoise is less than one percent in the world. And um, yeah, and I think probably, arguably the most counterfeited material in the industry. Less so than, no, less than three percent is natural on the market. Dude, this is like antiques roadshow quality. <laughs> You're gonna yeah. see those cards. Yeah. And what's this dude's name his or That's her MJ. name? MJ. <laughs> um do you folks have a card? Yeah. Where do you live? Taos. Huh? In Taos. Taos? I think it's that way. We I'm not sure. Gallery at my house where my shop is at. So we invite people up when they call us if we're home, and that's where my shop is. And I do like, if you want to pick a piece of rock and learn how to cut it, I do that also. So it's a lot of fun. Sokoki? How do you pronounce that? Huh? So Sokoki? Sokoiki. Sokoiki. Yeah. Supposed to be the First Nations people, but I don't really think anyone knows which tribe was here first. Oh, right, right. You know, it's like that issue of rock and gem. Mm -hmm. Our last one, we've had. Oh, you? That, that's you? Yeah. Um, we actually got the cover with that rare earth. This was back in June. Oh, bada bing. Yeah. They say I was the first Indian to ever own a turquoise mine. I kind of disagree because it was all of ours. Right. So, yeah. But, um, you know, they got a... That's how they sell magazines or something. <laughs> it's publicity. <laughs> yeah. That is amazing. I just, I what year? 
I'm gonna buy the June 19. Number six, bring a tea in Jogs and get it signed. Right. <laughs> yeah, I might switch to Kino this year. We've been there for like seven years. Now. Did you go to Kino this year? Did you see what happened? No, but Scott and Diana we set up. They said everything has changed. Everything changed. We've been venting in Kino for 30 years. Really? And so they paved the road. Can't That's do. Nice. Yeah, it is very nice. Can't do the normal tents. So they make you get a certain yeah they make you get a certain size. They want to, um, why don't they put permanent holes in for the same size tent every year that you can auger them in? I guess it's the what's or weird is this like I think, no and and then like parking lot for the little tiny so stadium. I, I cut turquoise. My grandma oh. makes Native American hand drums. Okay. In a uh, Taos. No. Well, right I, I want to buy one from right you guys. Now I'm green. Oh, fantastic. And some polychrome, so... Really? Oh, I, at first I thought you were talking about marijuana. No, no, no. Okay, no, sorry. I'm You're not growing, <laughs> I'm mining. Okay, cool. I thought you were just being vague. No, no, no. I'm mining <laughs> the green turquoise right now. And oh, man. So, yeah. Of North, North Star. Yeah. And uh, is that... Would that be it? No, it's something more like this. That's what I'm digging out right now. So, yeah, with our turquoise... Fantastic. We're the only ones that provide this paperwork. So if you were to get a diamond certified, same paperwork, same geologist. It's a hundred percent natural gem turquoise. Stunning. And the shine that you see on those stones will be there indefinitely. The um, stone never changes color. Jeez, because it's so hard. You don't have to worry about touching a glass table or anything. Right. Probably have to worry about the glass table. It'll cut. <laughs> yeah, it'll, yeah. That's how I identify natural to stabilized. Stabilized will not cut glass unless you've got metal in it. Because it's soft, that's why they stabilize. If you push it hard, it won't cut. If that is so cool. If you push this hard, whether it's cut or not, it'll rip glass. Oh, we all saw it with the cords. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, that's pretty cool. Um, you said you had some rough here. Um, I'm I'm gonna be here tomorrow, and I don't have a lot of money right now, but I'm gonna see if I can borrow some to buy a piece of that if if it's not sold out. Yeah. Because well, that I stuff's didn't awesome. Take it out, but yeah, this is... If you don't mind, could we see what the rough looks like? Mm hmm. There's 130 people watching. Uh-oh. <laughs> That's not too many, but they, a lot of my fans are, because I mostly cut turquoise. That's, right. I think they're drooling over here. Look yeah, at that. Yeah, that stuff there, you could take our nuggets and... No! <laughs> it bounced. It's like a ball bearing. That's hard. Does it bounce? Did you see it bounce? <laughs> of course it bounces, Rick. <laughs> so hard. That is stunning. Yeah, I didn't bring a lot. You said five dollars a carat. On uh, this here, no, this here is about one hundred fifty dollars an ounce. Okay. Uh, so if you were to cut it, then like pieces like this, it's definitely ten dollars a carat because of the color. Oh, that's beautiful. That's what we facet out of. Yeah, that is. But on this side, that's slick and slide, where the earth slid on the shear zone. And that polish is just from. Just from the earth. That's crazy. I think someone who didn't know this material would have thought it was tumbled. Yeah. Incredible. Well, I tumble it in a cement mixer, mm -hmm. but it comes out like this. Yeah, but you're not tumbling all the way to finish. You're just roughing out some of the host rock. Yeah. Right. Well, you got to. If you're going to buy good cutting stone and you don't want it breaking and fracturing on your customers, you got to tumble it. Down. Well, that's good ethics. A lot of people want to sell you their mud. <laughs> I tumble for four days in a cement mixer. And I use my little tiny pieces of turquoise to eat quartz, to eat garnet. And the only thing I t use to tumble is sizes like this and smaller. So I got a bucket of that. And you see how sharp the edges are? Mm -hmm. So I use that bucket time and time again and keep tumbling and tumbling and tumbling because that's my tumble media. Oh, it, it is the media because it's so dang hard. It's the turquoise. Nothing else will clean it. Ay, ay, ay. Yeah, you can see it's kind of smooth. After after four days of tumbling, oh man, the smoothness. But you can see some areas on it will shine, 
that's because of the gem silica in there. It's so highly silicated. So, yep. Yeah, but pieces like that, they're gorgeous. Um, you cut through the top of that, that's your aluminum phosphate, that's your main component of turquoise, that's what they dye and stabilize and try to tell you it's natural. It's not turquoise. It's the main component, but it's not turquoise. There's no copper, no iron, and no silica. It's chalk. Ours is hard, you can polish it. It'll turn glossy white because of the silica, but what makes it so hard is the volcanic activity that went through there. I'll show you something. This way here, we won't have to go through, oh, heat, gas, and pressure. Okay, Austin. You can look at this. And what determines this, I'll share this with you guys. And I asked Dr. Mike at the Smithsonian if this makes a, uh, any difference in the turquoise. He said, well, unlike any other mine, we have all the evidence. So it takes heat gas and pressure to form crystals. Okay, now show them. That's a terminated smoky quartz crystal Holy in smokes. the turquoise. Look and you can see that. the holes in it where the other ones have fallen out they after popped it out. got tumbled. I've never seen that before. That shows heat, gas, and pressure in the caldera where we mine yeah. four to five different volcanic activities went through there, and that's what happened to this material. Uh, Nisha, I'm not sure on the MOH, but I'll tell you it's harder than quartz. So what, six, seven? Has seven, to be seven. seven. Has to yeah. be. Seven, seven and a half. Which is something I've never even heard of. Yeah. If I had a piece of topaz around, I'd show you on this one. This does nothing to it. <laughs> but it's so hard. But it's material you'll never you'll never get your hands on. Unless you buy it. Moxie, I know. Isn't that crazy? So, but yeah. They, I've never seen smoky quartz on turquoise before. Yeah. I'll show you something really cool. In the Miocen time, 30 feet below the surface. Um, gotta go this way. Back in the Miocen time, this is a prehistoric boar that roamed in Colorado and in China. And if you look at this guy, you see his feet yeah. So, 30 feet below the surface in our mine, during the Miocen time, turquoise is a second sedimentary deposit that's a gel before it gets hard. Oh, it's the impression. That stone weighs 1.6 pounds. It's not for sale. Not for sale. Yeah. That's an heirloom right there. Yeah, that would be my voice. I've been offered by museums and I won't sell it. Oh my gosh, with the piggy hoof, with the Pumbaa hoof. Yeah, that is pretty cool. That is but crazy. I like to share, so. Dude, but I can't yeah, thank you enough. Good. Oh, that's the new green. So Yeah, some of it. Wow, that is very green. We've got pieces that are jade green. Oh, wow. And set in gold, that's amazingly beautiful. It's gold quality. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I love the stone because of the colors I like. This was a rare earth when I dug it. Great photo. Yeah. That's what's on the back of our North Star shirts. On the front it says North Star on the pocket. On the back it says, we love being lower than dirt. <laughs> oh, cool. <laughs> um, can, does it, True miners. I bet you that the, the turquoise probably rings pretty good on your pick. Like you know when you're hitting it. Oh yeah, it clicks. Rocky but, says yeah. he's officially drooling. Me too. I'm just trying not to drool on this stack right Look here. Look at this stone. That Whoa. stone, before I cut it in half, looked like that. Oh my goodness. Yeah. Beautiful book match on the that other picture. Yeah, that was crazy, huh? Looks like the earth around the ocean. Oh, right. That's what I try to do. I try to build sky scenes and stuff out of my jewelry. And sometimes I'll use like peach and pink opal for the sky. Oh, and I awesome. use little seafoam nuggets for the skies over the mountains. And that looks just like a sky scenery over the mountains setting the sun. Um, but, yeah. If you don't mind me asking, do you have any of your jewelry here that you made? It's all over, huh? <laughs> did you make those cobblestone pieces over there? Um, I did that one the on top the top. one? Oh, it's that spectacular. Took me two and a half weeks and I did it out of a Byzantine chain. Oh wow! So, that's yeah. oh, that's what the bezel. That's what looks like the bezel around. I use rope chain. 
I use all kinds of different things because I like to sell every piece we make different. Um, is the turquoise that's nodular in there, is that Lone Mountain? It's, all it's yours. Good. Oh, on the, on the, um... No, that's all Cripple Oh, wow. So, yeah, that's all seafoam nodules. I was completely and wrong. Actually, that's I'm actually <laughs> a seafoam or a botryoidal. The nodules we have were cut and torn underwater and I actually have a clam suit more than one of them what? at home. Yeah, you should come and visit sometime. I will definitely you wanna pick out come turquoise, and visit. Come and visit me. That, you don't live too far from me, five hours. Uh, Rick, the mine is North Star Turquoise here Cripple in Creek. beautiful Colorado. Cripple Creek, Colorado. I will take you <laughs> take you up on that. Dude, I got so excited, I'd never introduced myself. I'm David. I'm Clint. Clint, you, you're, you. you're a badass dude. <laughs> Check out this nausea. And at the end of the day, when I'm wiping it off to go home. <laughs> oh gosh, I couldn't rock this nausea. I just don't have what it takes. But you, you could rock this nausea here. Yeah. <laughs> That's the fifth one we ever had made. The last one I made out of sea foam. I traded it for my backhoe. That is odd. Well, that's a good trade yeah. for that guy. Yeah. You got it. It'll, it'll live longer than the backhoe. Yeah. <laughs> I absolutely will. There's a few people watching too who uh, are commenting who wanted the contact information to buy some. Oh, that is fantastic. So it's neat because it's different than a show. You actually got hands on and we live top of the mountain, so it's quiet, eat lunch, hang out, and enjoy the mountains for a little while. So it's pretty awesome. That is spectacular. It's a lot more than a show off. And my machine is six foot long, it's got ten wheels, eight inches of power. <laughs> did you make it? Well actually friends of ours did in Australia. And these have ten diamond or three diamond wheels and they're all diamond Pacific wheels the best in the world so it goes from a to b oh my gosh and when it comes off of there the stone is done so um, there's no zam no ruse no diamond paste no tellurium oxide no cerium oxide no nothing it's 100 percent natural um the three hard wheels are two of them the traditional 80 and 220 and another one's a rough one what's the rough one 60 or no it's an 80 grip 120 and a 220 oh, 120. and then it goes back to the cushion back to an 80 mm -hmm. to you drop down and go forward Right. That's and, what pros are doing. Well, you've got to take the chatters out of your stone, and with the soft wheel on the Diamond Pacific, it'll take the hard chatters out. They told me I'd never wear these wheels out, and my diamond grit now, my 80 grit, is now like a 400. Oh, wow. Yeah. Oh, man. But, yeah, I've ate through the wheels with this stone. Yeah, on harder stones, I go from... It's like cutting agate all day. Exactly. It, well, it, it exactly is like cutting agate yeah. all day. Yeah. Uh, on my harder stones, I'll go 80 to 20, then down to 140. Yeah. But that gentleman over there, Robert, was saying he goes down to 60 before he goes back to 280. I don't know if you know Zach John. Zach John? Yeah, he does cutting. Mm -mm. And he's cut my stone. And I had a big one that I brought up that was something like this. And he was worried because of the healing fractures, like crystals in it. I said, let me see. I'll shape it for you. So I turned his machine on and his body grit. And I hit that stone on it. I was like, <laughs> he's standing there watching me. And me and Jack mess, or Zach mess around with each other all the time. And he was like, dude, there's no way I'd even dream of touching that stone on that wheel. Oh, you man. just grab it and cut it. Yeah. Well, the proof is in the pudding. You know, you're rocket throwing your stuff all over the ground well, here. When we first started <laughs> faceting these stones, you look at this. With the diamond cut, those are cut just like diamonds. When we first had those done, we sent them to Sri Lanka. They're the top cutters in the world for gemstones. Old German guy calls me, he says, we know fast the turquoise is too soft. I said, look, cut one stone, I'll pay you whatever you want. Hour, hour and a half goes by, he calls me back. He says, we pass it this turquoise any day. I said, I bet you will. <laughs> That is but, fantastic. And then two months later, we got the centerfold of AGTA in the Prism Magazine. Do you mind if I look at that one right oh, there? Yeah, it's extremely one. unique. Thank That's you, Cloud. Cougar PD pinpoint. Thank you, Cloud Massacre, for the super chat. I really appreciate you, my friend. 
I dude. Love doing different things. That is awesome. Oh man. I like Inlay. Uh, Clint, I don't know if I'm going to be able to get it back the way it was. No, okay. Just throw it in. I can't thank you folks enough. <laughs> I got to just take a peek at Jogs. Was it maybe two years ago? But yeah. thank you so much for the You're for welcome. the walkthrough of your amazing material. Thank you. Cripple Creek, 100% untreated, no heated, turquoise, Colorado. Made <laughs> from Colorado. Excuse me, I'm beat. North Star. Uh, yeah. And then again, contact information right here. When I get the chance to it, I'll put it down in the description section below. Somebody's playing some mandolin instrumentals over there. I think mandolin players have their jobs cut out for them because they're symphonic tuning. They're uh, tuned all fifths. Do you cab? Yeah. Dude, are you kidding me? Get out of town! Get out of town! Yo, I sure will, dude. Clint, give me one of them. Oh, Clint. And you too, Missy. It's probably your doing. Thank you so much. Yo, you guys are off the hook. If you want a super variety, let me know. Will do. I'm going to come bug you. Okay. <laughs> come hang out. Oh, man. Thank you, Clint. And what is your name? I'm sorry. Louisa. Louisa, thank you. Are you going to be in Jogs this year? Maybe. Oh, no, maybe I'm Kino. To do Kino. So... On, like we were talking about Kino, if someone was just starting off in the industry and was kind of doing a lot of reselling, I wouldn't suggest it. You can do it. Now a lot of people couldn't do it. Got invited to that show like seven or eight years. It would that was a good time, but they now would be good because you get to see where you're gonna be. They moved so many people. Yeah. That my grandma was the smallest potato. She made drums, so yeah, not gemstones. They threw us to the like back, this. all the way in the back, and. I and do pieces like this and I inlay the turquoise and they take a long time to make but it's something when somebody sees it normally when I bring these to jogs everyone is sold the first day is it it's not cottonwood is it no that's actually a white maple burl and so what's so cool about them is they form on the outside of the tree it took two hours just to carve it I do these with a chainsaw and if you look at this you can see where it's kind of chatoyant Oh, yeah, the curls. Burl. Yeah. And then on the bottom of them... It's flamed. I do my tribal information on there also. That is fantastic. But yeah, they come out really cool. But for hand-done bowls, I try to make them more like the grinding bowls used to be. It kind of keeps our history going. Absolutely. Yeah. Clint, you're the best, dude. Thank you, my friend. You're welcome. I'm gonna come see you soon. Okay, sounds good. Come on up. Heck, yeah. I'm going to walk this way away from the copyrighted music, but again, check out North Star Turquoise in Cripple Creek. The phone number's right there. Give them a text if you're interested in any rough. Uh, yeah, I don't see any email or anything, so I'm sure they are uh, cell phone people. Let's take a look at these really quick. Look at those beauties. He was throwing these on the ground, bouncing them off the ground because they're so hard. You want to do it? I don't. Okay, throw it on the ground. Hard on the ground. And it didn't break. Impressive. Fantastic. So, folks, um, that's just this one little building right here. We've been here for three hours already. We started outside with... Um, some super kind folks that we interviewed at the Miners Co-op in Tucson. But my phone overheated. So what I'll try to do is... Uh, what I'll try to do is tomorrow I will try to start early outside before it gets too hot. And my phone crashes from the heat. But there's a whole other showroom over there. I only talked to four vendors in that place. So... I got a lot of work to do. Tomorrow I will do a live, but then I'm gonna go um, and get some footage to edit for future videos. Very cool. Oh, of course I'm gonna cut these and I'll, I'll definitely give, I'll do a giveaway or something after I cut it. Chuck it hard. She threw it pretty hard, harder than I wanted her to. 
most expensive most expensive bouncy ball ever very cool and then there's even an outdoor section over here uh recognize a lot of these folks from tucson but i'm gonna call it my gimbal's dead uh it's getting late what time is it oh we still got an hour we good to go we got an hour we're good to go Thank you, everybody. Rocks, I love you too, my friend. Good to see you, Daniel. How much do you think she weighs? How you doing, Mr. Armando? Do? Me? I weigh a lot. Oh, no, I meant the big, beautiful Pisacola Cooper ID thing. So that's 780, so I do that for 700. That is fantastic. I know, it's like, oh. But I'm not going to be here long enough. This is, oh, Sleeping Beauty. I almost thought it was Lone Mountain or something because of the nodules. I don't know. We'll see how tomorrow goes. I know. Why didn't you get a Panagot? Some Labradorite calves. So 20. Kind of got to get a weird angle to make them flash, but still nice. Some OJ. Are we going to get some of the turquoise? He gave me three pieces. You mean, are we going to buy some? Uh, I don't mind. It's kind of expensive. How are you doing? Oh, yeah, that guy's not having a good time. Are you at the Miners Co-op in Tucson? Many years ago I was, yes. I remember the beautiful sign. Ah, uh, thank you. <laughs> yes, the Heck yeah. Iron. Heck yeah. Can it cut? It's messy and it will polish, but you're like better off like getting tiger iron or something like that, unless it was a look that you were going for. Some of it's layered really nicely. So. Oh, for sure. Like something like that. I mean, it's, it's stunning. So the hematite and magnetite are softer than the jasper, so that's what it wrote to. Wow, only 175. That's a huge chunk of tiff for 175. Super. <laughs> yeah, I'm just thinking that myself. <laughs> I mean, you don't you don't have to worry about the AAA quality, but it's still. But you're gonna make your money back four times on one side of that thing. Yeah, that's yeah, you're right. <laughs> you're right, my friend. How much are you selling the dino for? These pieces are anywhere from like five to twenty bucks. It just depends. On oh, the that's a smoking deal. Yeah, yeah. It's, you know. Let me do the super nice you know, like, sales. Like, like ten dollars. That's a great one right there. Yeah, there's like pinks and other colors in there. Something like that would be fifteen bucks. It's like that. You know, five, like five bucks. I mean, what? It's, it needs a new home. You can't cut it all, you know. Right. If we just collect it all, we're gonna end up with a bunch of rocks when, for our folks to, for our kids to take. Right <laughs> yeah, right. right. This one's cool. These are actually all winners, really. For five to 15, you'd probably make you a deal on the whole lot. What time I have some some dino I can bring from Farmington? How you doing there, my friend? Was that some type of banded iron? Yeah, it actually is. Um, calling it Nice Stone Banded Iron. Lots of cool character in it. The gentleman says it's really messy, but some people don't mind the mess. Like, depending on your watering system, it can be not so bad.
You're from New Zealand. You should send me some Ponamu. I'll trade you for some turquoise. Well, no, it's, like, it's just hard to come by. 90 degrees there. It is. It was so hot. It made my phone crash earlier. Yeah, Jim, we can get some. Uh, it's spectacular stuff. It's just going to be really expensive. So I think it would be better to like buy it with intention on putting it into silver or gold than just buying it to have it because it's so expensive. Here's some Jalisco jars. My favorite. How you doing, my friend? Oh, yeah, Jalisco. Right? Oh, nice. And this is from Magdalena? Very cool. Very cool. I like the anatomic heart. You then at the Denver show outside, right? Yeah, yeah, but I, I, rec I think I recognize you folks. Is this uh, Weichel? Or, oh, nice. Made by the Weichel natives. Inspired by their peyote ceremonies, I'm sure. Opalos Romero. QR code to their Instagram. Check them out. Give them a follow. I'm sure they'll sell you some opals. I really like the Weicho art. I can't really pull it off myself, but I do like getting it as gifts. And over here, got some fire agates from Aguas Calientes in there. They look contour cards, but I think they're actually done on a wheel. And then some more Jalisco Matrix opals. Fantastic. Those are some nice gummy ones right there, some jellies. Cuántos años tú tienes en piedras? Oh, yeah. <laughs> awesome. Man, those are those are those are carrot pieces right there for sure. <sighs> Here's some contour carved opals. Do you have a preference between Tucson and Denver? Yeah, I like Tucson. I have a lot more friends there. Denver for me. Um, so they play a lot of music inside at Denver and then that keeps me from filming. Some nice jellies right there. That one's got some cool play. Yeah, Tucson. I got a lot of friends there in Tucson, but uh, I do like Denver. It's just too close not to go. Just way too close not to go. Oh, these are some cool uncut jellies. I actually like that a lot. Like, you could totally put these in art without even cutting them. It looks like some kind of Red Moldavite Tektite or something. Very cool. So my phone's about to die. It said I had 10% about 10 minutes ago. But if you're interested in any of that stuff, hit them on Instagram uh, or email. I'm sure they'll hook you up. Do you folks ever sell online? Perfect. Heck yeah. Opalos Romero, Jose Manuel Romero. Fine folks. With really good stuff. Someone should buy some of these. These are really neat. I've never I've seen that rough for sale before, obviously, but I feel like it's kind of advertised as if it was to be used as is. Thank you, my friend. Alright folks, I'm out of here. I'll see you tomorrow. There's gonna be a lot tomorrow. Oh, I'm going to start early. It's the last day. So a lot of... Tell him to give you a discount for the plug. Nah, Chet, that's not what I do. 
I mean, sometimes they do. And it's out of the kindness of their heart, but I definitely don't ever ask anybody for a discount. Sometimes people just give me stuff, but or offer a discount, but that's not what I'm here for. TK Chelster. No, thank you, my friend. Thank you. Uh, don't forget. Check out Cutting Edge Supply. This channel is sponsored by Cutting Edge Supply, your one-stop shop for all things lapidary and jewelry making supplies. And uh, also by Diamond Pacific, America's favorite lapidary machines. Thank you so thank you folks so much for watching. I love you and I'll talk to you later.